All right, y'all. We got another another guest today. My good friend Snap from the Moon Runners, Toronto in the house. Man, I'm excited for this one. So, um, man, this guy's a big big inspiration to me. So, um, excited to have him on. Yo, boy, snap. What's good, bro? What's good, brother? What's good? Just chilling, man. I'm just trying to get my notes in order real quick, you know? <laughs> yeah, I've been, man. I've been watching your shit, man. I've been watching your, your lives, man. You asked some really, really dope questions, so I can't wait. I can't wait for these questions, boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. I'm, I'm hyped, bro. It's, um, it's an honor to have you on, bro, because, you know, You've been a big inspiration to me throughout the years. And, man, tons of this generation look up to you. And, uh, yeah, man, so let, let's let's get into it. Like, if you could just tell the people who you are, where you're from, what you rap. All right, all right, all right. Um, so uh, my name is Snap. I'm from the Moonrunners crew. Um, represent Toronto, Canada. The whole nine, man. This yeah. Yeah, man, it's that simple. And uh, man, I think a lot of people uh, know you for your waves and your tuts and and your creativity and your unique flow, man. To me, whenever I see you, it's like, and everybody of the Moon Runners, they bring something different to the table. And like each person in your crew has a uniqueness about them, you know. And it's it's something that I was curious about too. Is like, man. There's not there's not that many crews nowadays, you know? And you guys you guys held it down for a minute. You're still holding it down. But uh what what brought you guys all together? Um, I think it was just out of friendship, man. I think um it was just it we didn't start out as a crew that were uh, you know, Somebody was looking for a b boy. Somebody was looking for a popper. Somebody was looking at this. It was just like homies, you know what I'm saying? And it, yeah. was, it was actually Sean and Raul that started the crew, you know mm. what I'm saying? So they were the ones that were like real tight, and then everybody else fell fell in place. So um, I was like the eighth member, man. So I'm like down the line, man. <laughs> so <laughs> damn. So, so how did how did they find you, man? Like, so they started out, and then they they're like, "Yo, we got to get this dude Snap on." <laughs> no, no, that's not how it works. That's not how it works. so. Um, I was I was in a dance hall crew. So if people don't know me, um, I also do dance hall. Like I've been doing dance hall the same time I was doing tutting. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Waving and popping and everything. Um, so. Mm -hmm. Me and Icy were in a crew back in the day um, called Back to Basics, and it was a dance hall crew. But we used to do everything, hip hop and everything. But me and Icy were specifically specializing in like tuts and everything, you know. So mm -hmm. um, we, um, so that crew ended up like falling apart, and Icy joined the runners before me. So okay. I was always close with the runners because I would see them around and we were, we, were, we, were, we were homies, you know what I'm saying? We'd go like parties together and shit like that. So um, it was not until 2010 that I, that I joined them, you know what I'm saying? So it's been like only 10 years with them. So. Yeah. So, so how long have you been dancing? Uh, I mean, you were doing dance hall the same time you were doing Tutton, but were you doing dance hall before that? No, so I started in grade nine. So this is in two thousand and one. Wow, two thousand and one, man. I've been Titan and uh, Liquid and Waves and Dance Hall. This is a weird combination, but yo, that was the vibe, man. <laughs> yeah, that's blessed though. Like, uh, what was it? So in two thousand one in ninth grade, who who were the inspirations that you first saw that like made you want to do what you do? One of my homies, uh, I'll still give him credit to this day. His name is Enoch. Um, Enoch was a guy who used to just do dance hall, right? But he had such a liquidy style. Um, it made me be like, yo, what is that? And then I seen him do um, liquid, like, like, 
and then I was like, yo, this is mad dope, bro. Like, this is great. Nice. So I didn't, there's no like footage anywhere out there. You know what I'm saying? Um, and when I seen him um, try to do some tuts, I was like, bro, what is that? You know, so back in the day, it wasn't like, yo, um, show me that. It, it wasn't, it wasn't like that. It wasn't like, all right, five, six, seven, eight. No, none of that. It yeah. was kind of like, it was kind of like, you got to watch it and learn it on your own you just gotta like learn visually so yeah that's that's the vibe back in the day and I, it was my homie enoch that inspired me and the whole dance hall scene was crazy in toronto man it was like probably one of the biggest um in the world so yeah it was it was it was like maybe three or four mega centers it was jamaica it was japan it was new york and it was toronto Wow, and this is this is early two thousands that that all that because um, New York had a, a maybe a an older history right with the the migration of dance hall, but then Toronto, I mean, as soon as it was in New York, it probably was in Toronto. It's just so close. Yeah, we're so close, right? So it was like it's like it's like we're we're like we're like a younger New York, as in like we're we're we're, we're smaller than them. Like if you go downtown, you you you've been downtown. It's like a mini New York, bro. So yeah, yeah definitely. So so uh, in the early two thousands, Toronto was. I mean, I've heard you tell the stories, but maybe everybody else hasn't. You know, like to to break down what it was like, like because uh, you guys were talking about how the battles and you know there was all these teams going on. So, so back in the day, if you weren't in a dance group, you weren't you weren't about anything. You weren't serious. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you were not in a dance crew, bro, you're not about like you're not serious. You're not a dancer, you know. Yeah. And um, we, in order for you to get your name up, you had to join a crew. You had to um, get your name out there by, you know, putting your name on a shirt and and repping and going to bat, going going to jams and battling and. You know what I'm saying? Like the whole nine, bro. Like there wasn't no like studios. Like maybe there was back in it, but it was no, it was no hip hop in there or dance on none of that. It was it was just like any studios was like informal, like ballet and everything. So when we were going out, it was all street, and it was like man, it was probably one of the most unreal vibes. I can't even I can't even replicate it till till this day. It was like a scene. Like it was a, it was a. If you the like, people will be talking about it all to this day. Like that's how big it was. It was probably one of the dopest, dopest scenes, man. Early two thousand, like, like you know the Sean Paul scene, the Sean Paul era, and everything when he first blew up. That scene in Toronto, untouchable, bro, untouchable. So, uh, man, some of the yo, some of the dopest dances I seen was from that era, and all now they carry weight. All now I'm like, bro, I I, I haven't seen anything like that. Concepts like face gra and like all in early two thousands, bro. I'm like, bro, this is crazy. crazy. So, so tutting, tutting was a huge part of that, that dance hall era. Yes, they, they would try to infuse it together. They would try to fuse it. Whoa, whoa. So you had dance hall, and then like uh, was Bruck up being talked yes, about? Exactly. We we we'd have Bruck up battles. Okay, okay. So dance hall, so. Was dance hall more of like the, the crew essence and also like just the party vibes and then Bruck Up was kind of like the solo get downs? Exactly. Okay, okay. So then, uh, so you had you had squads, you had teams and then it was like, was it organized by like area or was it organized by like, uh, you know, who you were friends with, where you went to high school or what? how did it break down? A little bit of both. There was teams in the east. There was teams in the west. Teams everywhere, man. And if you weren't in a in a team or a crew, you weren't saying nothing. You weren't saying nothing. You weren't part of the conversation, no, huh? You weren't part of yo, bro, <laughs> dog. Like you, you always wanted to like dog. Dance hall crews were celebrities. Straight up, they were like celebrities. Like you seen them across. They're like what? That's crazy. In 2003, there was a championship or like a competition called Spring Bling. Do you know anything about it? No. Uh-uh. Spring Bling. It was on BT and everything, right? And there was a crew representing from Toronto called Mad Skills. And um, they ended up winning the whole competition, right? 
Um, they, they faced New York when they were called uh, the Mount Boys. Anyways, long story short, the, the, the Toronto crew mad skills ended up winning, and mm. Toronto got even – Oh man, Toronto got put on the map again. So it was crazy. That era from Toronto, it was unreal, bro. Unreal, unreal. Yeah, damn. So, so in the house parties and stuff that y'all would go to, because you're you're in ninth grade. So, how long did this last? Th this era. Yo, it lasted. It lasted a minute. It lasted till around two thousand seven, eight. Yeah, 2007, 8, 9. And then I, it started getting violent, bro. Like, every house party was getting shot up. Um, in 2005, actually, it was in our city. It was called the Year of the Gun. And that was, like, we had as much killings as Chicago. And wow. It was, it was super dangerous. It was because of the dance hall parties. So wow. the dance hall was on a rise. And then it got super violent. And then it just came crashing down, bro. Why did it? Why did it get violent? Uh just you know, this crew don't like this crew, and they were yo, bro. If back in the day, the dancers were the gangsters, so you would go to a party, and if you see another crew, it's like yo, I don't like this crew, and the whole place gets shut up. Shot up. Wow! And before that, before they started shooting, it was was it handled on the dance floor? Sometimes. Sometimes it was like if somebody got disrespected, uh, they would handle it. Yeah. Yeah. So then uh, it seemed like so the violence was contained for a minute. So were they were they just handling beef at like the contests, like the, the tournaments or whatever? And then uh, it just got out of hand from there. Or? Some, sometimes there would be like, you know, sore losers. So like I remember being on stage. This is 07. And I remember um, we ended up being in the finals. I was in a crew called Back to Basics. So Back to Basics versus another crew called Yardies. And uh, we were going to face off in a, in a freestyle battle, you know. Um, and then before we even got to it, the whole place got shot up. And, and like, the st like we were, I was on the stage and, like, curtains were, like, booming and because it was, they were shooting on the stage. So wow. um, it was very, very dangerous. And after that, people were like, bro, I don't want to risk my life like that. So they stopped going. Wow. Damn, that's crazy, man. And that, that just basically shut it down. So what, did, did dance hall kind of continue behind the, behind the scenes? Or did no, it to be honest, it was very underground after that. So it was like booming. And then it just had its, it just, you know, everything comes to an end, you know? So it came to an end. It crashed down. And it wasn't really popping. It was only popping in the underground scenes. And after, after I think 2000, I think I would say 2012, it started rising up again. Mm. It started, it, it started getting into the ma like the mainstream. Yeah. 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 And um, predominantly, like, where were the the people doing dance hall? Were they from all different backgrounds, or was it mainly people that were from the Caribbean? No, man, it was ma mainly from the Caribbean. I stood out big time, bro. I stood out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. So that uh, th a lot of people don't know this, and I didn't know this till I went to Toronto. Was like, you know, you think of Canada, and you think like <laughs> it's all white people up there, you know. <laughs> and then when I went to Toronto, and like all the food is like straight Caribbean, Haitian, you know, Jamaican. I was like, wait, what? Yeah. It, it didn't make no sense to me. Like, how did how did the Caribbean people get that far north? <laughs> yo, yo, that's a that was the real question. <laughs> yo, we have a huge Caribbean scene in Toronto. I don't know. It's like, and not just Caribbean. Like, I feel like Toronto is one of the most multicultural cities in the world. We have everything yeah. here, bro. We have, it's like a melting pot. We have everything. You know, um, it's uh, except we just have a like a larger Caribbean um, influence in the city, so that even our lingo um, is you know from the 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 the, the patois of the Caribbean of, of yeah. the, the Jamaican people. So um, it it our our lingo, everything, our slang comes from that. It's from from the Caribbean. So yeah, you know. So do you know, do you know why? So it's not really a question of how the Caribbean people got there. It's more of 
why? <laughs> why would you? <laughs> it's like, why would you go to a place like that is so cold when you were just on a tropical island? Yo, <laughs> makes no sense. Why? Bro, I don't know if Canada was just accepting, or I don't know, man. It was just, yo, Canada, and especially Toronto. Toronto has the one of the largest Caribbean, you know, scenes, and and it's not like that everywhere else, you know. And in Montreal, there's a there's a big uh, Haitian scene, you know. We don't mm -hmm. have a lot of Haitians in Toronto. We do. Uh, okay. not, it's, it's nowhere close to, to uh, Montreal, um, mm. but we just have a a huge Caribbean scene here, and I, and and. I, I don't know why we we have such a large number of Caribbean people, but it's just that's what it is. It's just I mean that's super nice. dope, man. But like you know, in LA, it's you think they would come to LA or something, right? Like it's at least yeah. warm over here. But uh, you know, we do have Caribbean people here, but it's it's very like it's in small pockets, you know. And I actually didn't really start to see it until I came back from like Toronto where I could spot it more clearly because actually Toronto was my first experience of like, dang, there's a dense population, you know, um, of Jamaican people here. And I was like, dang, man, uh, it's just, it just blew my mind, bro. It just blew my mind. I just was stuck. <laughs> Jerk chicken and, and all that, man. The, the dirty rice. Um, <laughs> rice and man, beans, man. I'm getting hungry right beans. now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah so when you were saying that the lingo is like uh in toronto i was always when i first met you guys i was still kind of like like these guys talk like they talk like some like i don't know it, there's an accent here but it damn sure ain't fucking a boot and like you know these like canadian accents you know that i would associate with you guys but then um so you guys picked up on this, like, uh, I mean, Moonrunners already got their kind of lingo too, but but it's influenced by, you said, Patois, right? Mm -hmm. And so there's also, like, the Jamaican population that goes to, like, the UK and stuff too, right? And uh, I think they, there they, do they call it Pigeon English? Is that what they call it? You know, it, we, we have the same, like, almost the same lingo, man, because we're, we're both inspired from... Um, the Patois Caribbean scene, you know what I mean? We both, we both uh, like our influence, our language. So that's why when I went to uh, the UK this summer and I was listening to the, the, the lingo, their slang, and I was like, yeah, this is what it is. They just have an accent, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, 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 or we have the accent, something like that. So, you know what I mean? <laughs> so it's, it's the same, it's the same. It's influenced by um, the Caribbean, you know, slang, but the Jamaican slang, Patois. Yeah, so give us an example, because, like, I mean, I think it's beautiful, like, and I think that it's, like, real, uh, it's 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 a trip, man, how, how that English forms, you know, like, uh, can you give, like, an example off top, like, how you would say something, and then the translation of it? Like, for example, um, if somebody was to say, what's going on, right? Um, in Patois or in our slang, we would just say Wagwan. Wagwan. Wagwan, yeah. yeah. And Wagwan means what's going on. It's 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 English. It's just broken English, and then it's just all together. And then yeah. if somebody was, and then it's slang. There's a lot of slang to it. And then somebody would just say Midday, you know, and that means I'm here, you know. Midday, yeah. Yeah. Like you know, it's and it's like it's just a whole 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 slang and a whole lingo that we pick up on, and it's so natural for us it's so natural yeah. for us um and then toronto has its own flavor too when they go yo what are you saying um and he goes none still i'm just chilling you know and then that that slang comes from like you know the hoods you know of toronto and that's how that's how we all speak that's how we all speak yeah. except in the corporate world you don't speak like that but you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah yeah man that's crazy man because yeah even from uh my city like uh it doesn't really happen like when I when I get together with friends that I grew up with, like we created so many words and like combinations of slang, and uh, it it actually was stretched far from from the slang that was like generally in LA. And actually, my neighborhood we would talk in like real specific ways, and uh, but it never comes out 
unless I'm with them. So, it, like, even now, I haven't seen these guys in a long time. So it's kind of like uh, I don't even know. I don't even know if it would come out anymore. But uh, it's real. It's real interesting, man. How how different groups start to formulate languages and um yeah and it creates a, a certain bond too like it's like kind of your it's like your past <laughs> it's like yeah, your past man. it's like it's like toronto has its own culture and it's rich it's influenced from the caribbean but it's like their own it's its own vibe man it's, its own vibe trust me trust me yeah right. yeah and then speak on what you wearing bro what you wearing always good vibes what's oh, behind shit. it okay okay um so this is this is my brand um you know i we run this brand called uh, always good vibes and i run it with uh my partner Flo. Flo said no you know what i'm saying and yeah. uh this is always good vibes and this is uh, we we do authentic dance hall classes in the city um so yeah man this is me i, I like to rep it everywhere i go because that's why not you know what i'm saying why yeah not? i mean hey you rep it energetically anyways too man and Respect, it's it's right? interesting when, when you when you wear something like that because uh it also brings brings good energy your way too like you ain't gonna fight somebody that says always good vibes <laughs> like <laughs> Yo, like you gotta be on a real agenda to 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 square off with somebody that's like radiating good energy, like, you know. Oh, vibes. Like never mind, man. It was good. He's like, he's like, ah, nah, you good, man. You good. <laughs> but uh, bro, yeah, man. So then, um, when you have you have the transition between dance hall and then you get up into the the later two thousands and you start to see. Like when did you meet like uh Icey and Sean and them? I met Iceman in like two thousand and like seven. Mm. I met him in like two thousand seven. Um and yo, believe it or not, it was at the first we had a uh So You Think You Can Dance here. And oh, it was okay. the first one that that was in the city and I met him at the auditions. Dang. And it was it was like a small world because I didn't know anybody that used to like tut outside the dance hall world. You know what I'm saying? And then I seen Icy and Icy had a different like vibe to him. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, bro, what the fuck? Like you tut too? The fuck? Like it was just like, bro, it was we connected on, on 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 some real, you know? Yeah, instant. Instant. So up until that point, did you have any influences outside of the uh, dance hall community? Like, did you see, like, when you were looking for inspiration with cuts, were you looking at the pop world? Or? Uh, nah, because uh, at the time, any footage that I did see of, of poppers, they all looked the same. <laughs> You know, they all look the same and everybody was rocking the suits you know what i'm saying they're all rocking the suits with the with the really really baggy like you know what i'm saying yeah and they just look the same like one one popper would come out and then dance and i'm like, all right, cool and the next pop will come out and dance and it was the same thing and i'm like the fuck like you know and the next person would come out and like it was like so similar i'm like do i really want to dance like that and i just at the time, I just wanted to create. So uh, my vibe was to create, but I didn't really see anybody that was, you know, besides um, in the Limp Biscuit video, Mr. Wiggles was doing a whole bunch of waves. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, that was fire. That was fire. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, that was in I think. Or, 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 or 2000. Yeah, those music videos really had uh, an impact, man. Like whether it was like Missy Elliott or you know even like videos like Ciara was putting out and shit like that, where you start to see some swag. Chris Brown start coming out. Um, but uh, yeah, man, the the influence like it's really interesting to hear that. So you guys were on a touch touching way before, way before you even like really were looking at popping for anything. Yo, to be honest, I didn't start popping, popping, you know, till like, damn, man, till like 2008, 9, 2008, 9, I didn't pop, 
pop. It was just strictly waves and um, creativity, tuts, and just concepts. We had played the concepts for so long, you know what I'm saying? And it wasn't, we didn't, we didn't do no pop. Like, I didn't do no pop, at least, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. And what, what was it that made you want to, like, add a hit in there? Uh, I wanted to enter the competitions. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's I real. Would, I would enter and I would I wouldn't make prelims, bro. And then they always say you're not you're not popping. I'm like the fuck, bro. I was so mad, bro. I was so mad. So I was just like, let me just add a pop at the end of the, you know, eight count or count of four, you know. Yeah, because there, there's always like a competitive nature, and I think in uh. Well, I think just young people in general, but also like just young men in general, like we have a certain competitiveness that's just a part of our system. Like we gotta, we gotta go heads up with somebody. And uh, yeah, so so who was it that was like, like uh, it was like a judge that told you you gotta pop more? Man, everybody was telling me that, man. Everybody was. Man, everybody and their mom was like, you ain't popping, you ain't popping. And um, it wasn't until like 08, 09, I was like, you know what? Let me add this damn pop. I want, I'm trying to battle some 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 people, bro. So uh, we added the pop, you know, and even it was it was like that in the city. It was like that in the city. We go in and we just tut, pop, 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 and we just tut, 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 tut. And then people would be like, you guys are not dancing. And we're like, um, what? What do you mean? You don't see these concepts, bro? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but they wouldn't understand it. It's like we were light years ahead. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and yeah. Now we could do the same set now, and they'd be like, yo, that's crazy. It's like, bro, like, you know, it was just, we did the same shit. Like, but um, we, were, we weren't making no, no prelims here. So all we, all we had to do was when we asked, like, why didn't we make prelims or what's up? And they're like, well, you guys are not adding your groove. You know, mm. a groove. So what we what we did was like, all right, we just added groove. So we started like tutting, tutting, stop, and we just added the groove. Oh man, game changer, game changer. We started that slapping was... up battles, left, right, and center, bro. Because all they wanted to see was the groove. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so so man, that's that's crazy to me, man. But you know, it makes sense because like when you have. Uh, it's an issue that we have that we're trying to like, you know, there's like the traditional culture, like, like, and what you guys were doing was like a derivative of, of a culture that was far in the past, right? Like, so you had tutting, but you guys were just doing that and it didn't fit what people, their preconceived notion of like what tutting should be or what tutting should be paired with. It was like, uh, you guys were just tutters so like when you guys were doing the tuts did you you had like groove but it was more like a dance hall thing or yeah it was because our like especially uh me and icy we had uh, a, a dance hall background so when we were adding our groove we were adding more bruck up to our to, yeah. to, to 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 the vibe so when we were adding bruck up a lot of the people were like oh shit what is that you know what I'm saying? And we didn't we didn't really connect too deep with the popping and we didn't really connect too deep with like the all style scene. What we connected was like the flex scene. We connected heavy with the flex scene because their foundation is also broke up. Yeah. So it's like we connected on like a we, we went to New York multiple times, we battled and everything like that. So they Yo, it's love down there in New York, but we understand, like, it resonates with us. So we were, like, it, like the flex, whatever, in Toronto, but not, not officially because we were doing the waves. We were doing the, the tuts. We were doing the concepts. We were doing the ground moves. We were doing all that, except, and we were doing it to broke up music, too. We would listen to, like, you know, Hit Master Chinks and DJ Aaron and, you know, unanimous and all those guys. Like we would, we would listen. Unanimous is pretty. Like was I found out about him newer, but it was still fire. Like we were making up concepts and everything. So we, we, it resonates more with us with the broke up scene rather than the popping scene. But then, like it, it transitioned. We we made a little balance and we transitioned it, and now we like do a little bit of both. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 
a little bit. Yeah, more. yeah, man. Um, so was it was it ever? I mean, you guys found each other. You found this crew that you guys kind of like had the same values. You had a similar style, uh, and it was, you know, you guys accepted each other and were like kind of building and feeding off each other. Um, but you know, a lot of people like I was talking to Icon yesterday. You know, you have people that are tutting but never found the community that supported like what they really wanted to do you know so they always tried to kind of like fit fit what was done before you know and then it's crazy man because i've been talking to even ogs about it it's like when does a culture adopt innovation because you have a culture and you're trying to define like what popping is and what tutting is and was popping an umbrella term or is tutting does it fit underneath that does tutting belong to popping you know uh and so really though i think what you guys are doing is like you guys were doing something completely separate your inspirations weren't even part of popping you know so it's a trip to me though because now what's happening is you guys were ahead of your time and now popping is kind of uh, as long as you're hitting, we can adopt everything else that you're doing. <laughs> and you're like, you're like, come on, man. Like, give me some credit. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> Y'all didn't want us before. Now we just add a little and, and now we're good. You know, um, I'm curious to see like what, uh, what's going to happen next with the tutting world because, uh, there's so many people tutting across the world in India and Vietnam and, and all these other countries, Japan, like all the finger tutters and stuff, you know, um, where they no longer have that burden of authority going like, yo, you got to hit, you know. So I think now is going to be the time when when tutting is truly going to take off. I agree, man. I agree. I think we're in a time where uh, tutting is no longer associated with anything. It's just its own thing. And tutting now um, is is classified as like when you're tutting, right? The only thing like like people care about would be the concepts, the flow, this and this and that. But before when we were tutting, it was like, where's your hit, man? Where's your yeah. hit? And then we would be like, uh, I'm fucking tutting, bro. It's like, no, you popping, my dog. You fucking popping, you know? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. It, bro, because it, it, was cla it was classified under popping, you know what I mean? Because anything that, you know, to do with, with, with you know, tutting or, you know, strutting, or, it was just like popping, popping. And so I was like, all right, cool. So we had to really try to adapt but at the same time keep our own style bro so we took a lot of heat for that bro a lot of heat but um there was a lot of people who respected it yeah There's a lot of people who said yo keep doing what you're doing because what you're doing is you're elevating the game yeah you know? and one of one of the big homies who said that was wiggles mm. um when we when we went up to wiggles house we we linked up with him in 2013 uh, yeah. 2013, 2014, and we wanted to learn um, blocks. We wanted to learn 52 blocks. Yeah. Okay? We wanted to learn that. And, that's that's uh, when you guys were staying with me, right? You guys took that, that day trip up there, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, I was in fucking class, man. Damn it. <laughs> These scissors are in the building, bro. Yeah, that's so, crazy. So check. We were there, um, and when we wanted to learn blocks, me and Icy, we were talking about like, yo, wigs, can we tut with it? Can we can we call it fifty two tuts? And then he was like, Brothers, you guys are doing it the right way. And I was like, Damn, okay. Okay, so we took the the concept uh, or the, the style of blocking, right? Fifty two yeah. right? And we added tutting with it. So it was like boom. Boom, 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 sap. What to do? What? So we started adding our concepts with it, and we named the video actually that we shot with Mr. Wiggles "52 Tuts" instead yeah. of "52 Blocks." So, yo, 
w Wiggles was a huge um, ins uh, inf inspiration for us to say, yo, keep doing what you guys are doing. You guys are young Jedi, uh, young Jedi Tuts. So I was like, bro, this is, this is mad fire. And we kept elevating and pushing and pushing and pushing. And, you know, it was, it was, it was dope. It was dope. And I, I'm surprised so many people were like, watch the videos and they call our, our crew name on, or individuals in the crew and they, they say, yo, you guys inspired us. I'm like, damn, bro, respects, bro, respects. Because we didn't, we didn't know, bro. We we're just trying to t push a style forward um, and not just keep it as, um, two-dimensional we were like yo what can we do with it can we take it and put it 3d can we take it and do it and we were just like changing it without knowing we were changing it you know what i'm saying um, yeah I, I asked i asked wiggles um and he was he was telling me that toronto was known for like three things you know and he said we were known for our uh b-boy scene Right, we have a huge b-boy scene. Shout out to Bag of Tricks, Boogie Brats, Super Nats. Yeah. Um, and then he said the second thing is known for is our threading. You know, our threads was like crazy yeah. good. Like we were yeah. threads on the floor. And shout out to the b-boy scene for that too. And he goes, yeah. the third thing you guys are known for the Toronto is your tutting. I'm like, what? Bang. I was like, yo. We we got we we got put on. That's incredible. That's incredible. So, um, tutting we we and everywhere around the world they always know our crew for tutting. But we don't just do tuts. Yeah, you know, we, we do. Like, we do house. We do hip hop. We do popping. We do turfing. We do like everybody does everything. Like dance hall. Like we do everything. But we're very known for around the world is for our tutting, which is like an honor man because like we were just trying to push it push it forward you know what i'm saying and yeah now that we're we're getting older we hear that a lot so we're like bro much love man much love it's like we're just trying to push the bar man push the bar yeah it's it's crazy man to to think uh like how that happened and it, it sometimes it just takes you know one person to come and just encourage you slightly and validate your your experience you know um and you see people like in your crew like connects you know you guys took a lot of the weight in the beginning of of, of the opposition you know the, the the things to fit in and then like like in some ways i'm like uh you guys probably sheltered connects from taking that full blow so now you see connects going and he's like he turfing you know tutting like Yo, do your thing next. Like, just be you, and and like, you see the effects of that. Like, he's man, he's he's world class. You know, <laughs> this is crazy. Yo, shout out to Connects. Um, what what we did? Like, he was the youngest in the crew, and we always kept telling him. He said, "Bro, like, whatever you do, continue to push who you are. Like, you're gonna, you know, if anything, you got like bigger brothers like us. You know what I'm saying? Telling you, bro." Do that concept. Push this. And we would drop gems on everybody. We'd be like, yo, do it like this. Yo, should add this. Yo, this and that. So um, Connects is, yo, we probably one of the most creative person, like dancers, tutters. And he's in my he's, he's in my crew. So I'm like, bro, this is this is mad dope. He's one of the most creative tutters I've seen, like in the in the new gen. So it's like he's bananas, bro. He took it, he took it from, you know zero to a hundred real quick you know what i'm saying so shout out to next yeah man and uh i was just talking to intricate too you know uh it's something you see this is something where we're gonna get in the weeds a little bit about like words and stuff but so you have like flexing right and you have like what they call connects or connecting right and then you have turfers and they still call it tutting um but now like what what when we're talking about a word um is is tutting the umbrella term that fits in all these other styles like connecting or is connecting something completely different out of the flex scene to be honest um that's what they were showing me they say it's different right? yeah connecting is different right um but that's that's just their you know perspective or, or interpretation of it it's it, but well it's like it's like we know it as tutting, but they know it as connecting. 
and that's what they call it or they call it, they call it something else and you know but at the end of the day what we call it doesn't really matter because what we're doing it all is like one it's all one we're doing concepts we're doing shapes we're doing angles we're doing you know it's all one bro you know what i mean yeah. i think it's just the name the 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 the, the you know, calling a certain thing is just to claim it. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, you know, if it's, it's like, kind of like uh, it's kind of like how popping and smurfing in in the in, in Europe. You know, they were calling popping smurfing, and they didn't even know what popping was. You know, so there's all these things that are like uh, cultures that are evolving at the same time in different places, and you just got different lingo to describe the same thing. Yeah, yeah. I think it's it has to do with um, if you name it, then it's yours, mm. right? Yeah. So if yeah. I name, you know, this one move, right, and people will be like, oh, wait, I've seen it before. Isn't that called so-and-so? So if you name it, then people will take ownership of it. So the, I think the whole, the whole naming, but it all looks the same, comes yeah. from trying to claim it so that people can be like, oh, well, you guys started a movement. Mm. you know yeah, yeah. but it was it's more it's more of the same family it's more of the same family yeah yeah it's a family thing and i think it's um when you start to use certain lingo right there's a story behind the word and uh it's not like we want the stories to get lost you know because you know the if you grew up in new york and you saw flexing and connecting you were like uh you like, yo, the first person I saw do connects was so-and-so, and, and he showed me this. But if you just call it tutting, it becomes like a big, like, long, long, stretched-out history where it's like, uh, I think some people feel like their story gets lost, you know? Exactly, exactly, 100%. Yeah, so, yeah, man, I, I, these these words and stuff, like, culture culture is so much bigger than the than the words that we use to try and describe them, you know, whether it's, you know, you could have called pop and hitting, you could have called like, you know, now that we know, like popping was kind of the, the umbrella term, but actually boogaloo is more of an umbrella term. You know, <laughs> if you look in Bay area history, they were calling all this stuff that fell under, like, they would be like, Oh, he's boogalooing. It's yeah, like, exactly. they say, Oh, he's popping or he's pop locking or he's, you know, there's all these different words that just describe what you see, you know. Oh, he's diamond, he's hitting, you know, it's like yep, 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 yep. Well, does it does it matter? I mean, let let's get back to the real reason why we do this and like like let's share the stories for sure, but we, we could spend our whole life arguing and trying to define shit. Like let's just move to some sound, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely, you know. I mean I, you know, uh to 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 a certain extent, because l like look how Turfin started, like look how Turfin started, and look how Flexin started. They also took, you know, um, they added stuff from certain things, and they created their own. And now it's a movement, you know, light feet, same vibe. It's like, it's like as now we're moving on to like you know newer newer generation. They want they want to keep creating, and styles is like something that they want to you know start and and rep and you know push forward a culture like that they feel that represents themselves you know something like you know like the whole flex scene it's like they have hat tricks they have glides toe spins they have bone breaks they have all of that it's like but um, they take a lot from popping you know, they take a lot from, for example, like when you're gliding or when you're you're waving and when you're like, it's just they have their own vibe to it. And they, same thing when, when with turf, they, you know, Intricate, I was watching the thing with Intricate, shout out to Intricate. He was explaining a lot of shit. So it was, it's like, I think the reason why they want to do the whole name thing in is to push something forward or to start something that they feel uh, more connected to rather than something that's already there and they're not really connected to they only connect to a few styles mm -hmm. i connect to the tutting and the waving but i don't connect to you know um doing the, the the roman twist for example or something like i don't connect to that you know 
but you yeah. do connect to certain else. So it's like, yeah, man, it's 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 definitely it's definitely like devil's advocate, you know, like there is this, but there's also this side too. So yeah, man. Yeah, it's a catch twenty two, man, and it's I think it's something. There's a lot of tough discussions we got to have in this in this day and age, and uh, I think when we just learn to like listen to people and, and realize at the end of the day, we all have a story. We all have struggle and we all got to, you know, um, we got to get through this life together yet, you know? So, and, and this dance shit that we do is so, man, it's such a blessing, bro. It's, it's like, I, you know, when you get sentenced to quarantine, I'm like, shit, I got practice time, you know? <laughs> How, hey, if I stay healthy, I'm good, man. Like, I've been on quarantine. I, I, I stay practicing in my backyard, you know? So it's like, look at Connects. Like, man, he got quarantined. He's a, he probably happy as hell. Just like, I got no pressure to go out with you guys no more. <laughs> Yo, shut <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I was when I was uh, when I met Tetris. Um, he was telling me about certain angles that they used to only do um, compared to what's out right now. Like he used to say, there was like the Egyptian. I don't know if you guys see the Egyptian yeah. and and the box. Mm. Right? He said that they were only messing with those two. You know. Yeah. And like for example, when we ch when 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 he started seeing stuff like this, like, yeah, he never really seen them type of patterns before so it was like whoa that's dope like and that that's what i mean about pushing the 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 the, the found pushing the evolution of Titan. it was like to find new things like uh and then when i seen icon he was he introduced me to the grid yeah shout out to icon for the grid you know yeah like, man bro like you know you know what the thing is though i think what separated the runners flavor with any with everything that was going that was out there at the time it was the flow of things it was and that's why a lot of these tutters nowadays they don't they they lack they lack the sauce it's it's because they're they're jumping from one move to another move without really taking in and understanding the sauce of, of you know yeah. I'm, I'm not talking about you know the flex scene because they got the sauce or the yeah. curve scene because they got the sauce but <laughs> but but i'm talking about like i've been watching these online battles and stuff like that so um it's definitely definitely interesting to see but what made us so different is how we understood it was especially me was I was looking at it, looking at tutting, like looking at how rappers flow. You know, I was looking at it like how rappers flow and every rapper was different. You know, like every rapper yeah. had its own flow. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to tut like that. It was like a, it was like a, like a vibe, you know, and every, every rapper had that. So I, I wanted to be, you know, the, the the dancer that moved like how the rapper was rapping. So yeah. my cutting was like that. So, um, yeah, man, it's just what made us so different was our flow of how to move in and out. Uh, and that's what was like, yo, you guys, there's, some, there's something about you guys. And we would connect to the music, and it was definitely how we push it together. So the flow of things was, was, was incredible. With yeah, time. man, that's such a good good thing to mention. Like the way you conceptualize your movement, and uh, when you're thinking about like just that thought of rapping with your tuts is like, dude, that'll just change the game. Like anybody listening, that that that'll change the game. Like turn on your favorite song where someone's rapping, and just talk to them with your tuts, like like how they're rapping at the camera, like. It was the same thing that actually Frenick said too. Like when he was um, when he would tick, he was talk he would practice his ticking like he was rapping. Mm. Um, and I think that's something that dancers, um, I, I think I could say this safely is like we we kind of want to be us. We want to be a musician or a singer or a rapper, and yet. Some for some reason the wires got twisted up in a good way, <laughs> and 
we just got to do it with our body now, you know? <laughs> and for me, like, the way that I, I dance is, like, I, I think of, like, a, a jazz band, you know? So when I'm thinking about textures and hi-hats and things like that, or, like, the saxophone, when there's, like, sharp, like, changes in the, in the sound or, like, a switch, boom, 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 God. Like, you have these, these speed changes that go along with the, the whether it's the, the, the change in pitch or the speed of the note switch or the floatiness of it. And you might just hit some sort of wave tut out of that. Because for me, like the icon grid thing was like, okay, cool. So now when I apply that to sound, those, those boxes just start to, they start to shift, you know? <laughs> Bro, it's unreal, man. It's unreal. The, the, the whole... The whole vibe of what tutting is now, crazy, man, crazy. Because when I was doing it, it wasn't, I didn't see anything. I didn't see anybody that was tutting like that. Oh, mm. but like, I didn't, there wasn't, there was, it wasn't YouTube at the time. There wasn't any, it was no footage. If anything, it was just music videos. And, um, and, and the dance hall scene was booming. So like, <laughs> yo, bro, you don't, you didn't, you didn't see anything. It was just that crazy. And then when I started to get in deep and I seen all the tutters, I was like, whoa, but we still stood out. We were still miles away because they were popping with their tuts. Bang, 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 bang. Mm. They, were, they were popping with their, their tuts. And I always told them, I was like, if you guys pop with your tuts, right? And you keep it like bang, bang, bang. I said that the illusion of tuts will, will fall away, like we'll, we'll lose. Like you, can, you can't just tut and pop and the illusion of touch, ta -da, ta -da, ta. it's a, it's like an illusionary vibe where if you add just strictly pops to it, then then the illusion of it fades away. And they were like, oh, for real. So then they started putting it in pockets and it, it was, it was, you know, making sense a little bit more, you know, but yeah man who knows what, what when this clip or if this clip will reach new gener generations to be like yo bro he's yeah let's let's try some of this shit out bro i'm down yeah man i think that's partly so i think there's two reasons why kind of popping fell behind especially in tutting and a few other things <laughs> but uh <laughs> and a few other things but uh you know the thing is is like people they call me a popper, you know, but like I was looking at people like yourself, people from the Bay Area, people from Memphis, like those were the clips I was watching. I was watching Crumpers, you know, like uh, and it just so happened that I was in the Mecca of popping and, and like around some of the best poppers that um, I started to, you know, like that was just my language that I spoke. But, you know, the inspiration was from all these different areas. Uh, but the thing was, is like when it comes to popping with tutting, there is going to be a limitation to it because when you think about popping in general, normally you're thinking of a stop. So grooves, a groove is typically, it just doesn't stop. It may change direction or speed, but it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't stop right away. So like when you're talking about tuts, you, like you're in a flow boom, bam, boom, boom. And you're having this, like, it's shifting. But as soon as you feel like you got to go bang, it's like, oh, shit. Like, it disrupts the whole flow of the thing. Definitely, definitely. I mean, you know, there's there's ways of doing it where it, you could still be in the pocket. You could still, like, do your formula, formula, and then add the cherry on top going bang, you know? And that's the best way, bro. To me, that's the best way. The, the little... A little sprinkle, like bang, like it's all of a sudden you have all these details, and then you go, <laughs> man, that's to me, that's a, that's a magic, like uh, that's what attracted me to popping was the illusion of it to begin with. But uh, that hard hit when I get around the OGs or like you know the people from LA, and like they can just just hit, and it says so much. At the end of the day, what I think is happening is, like, we have these skills and these tools, like, cutting, like, for you guys was a language. It was not just, like, some sort of, like, position or trick. It was, like, how you guys spoke to each other. 
And like the same when when you when you're in LA, like you've been here. When you when they hit, it's like it speaks, like it says something. And so when you see popping around the world, there's there's uh you can tell the people that understand that the hit really communicates something too. So uh yeah, all these things are just tools of language. I feel. Uh, when 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 did you start, uh, Tutty? Man, it was uh so like I came up I came up around Tetris and Devious and those guys, you know, and a lot of people were studying like in LA. Uh but I would say, you know, Tetris and Devious were the ones that just like when I saw Tetris it was it it didn't even make sense. It actually just it didn't like I couldn't start. I couldn't start studying after that. <laughs> I think it stopped me from studying cuz wow. it was just like I would see him and he would give me some basic drill. I was like, well, how do you do that? He would give me some basic <clears throat> combo. And he's like, yeah, just work on that and it'll it'll evolve. And I was like, uh, yeah, but what you doing, bro? This look nothing like the thing you just gave me. <laughs> like, don't <laughs> don't give me this, you know? And uh, <laughs> when, when he, I, re, I still remember the day, actually Kid Vibrate was there too. Me and him were like in another world together, but we were just, in the dojo and the spotlights in the back and uh uh you know Tetris has got this light across him and he's just going bing 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 and he's developing all these crazy intricate boxes to small back to big around into a wave and back out. It was like damn and it wasn't actually till you guys came to town that I felt like uh I see when you went to sleep on my couch <laughs> Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's when, bro. Because I was like, I, I had like, like the little shit, like maybe you know, like the little four square or something. And then uh, Icy's like, Nah, let's just let's just go some rounds. And I was like, All right, I'll try. You know. And then uh, when we started the session, you know, at the school and all that, um, it started to go okay. You know, I think uh, if I just keep at this. Uh, it'll become something. So every time I would ride the bus to school or walk to school, I would just be, you know, just slowly, just all the way, man. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I remember that. I remember that. I remember yeah. That. That you, was... I mean, you saw me, you saw me when I was just starting to tut, you know? So, I mean, it's, it's been a while since then. It's been like, what, six years, almost seven years. Six years, bro. Six, seven years. Damn, bro. Shit, has it been that long? <laughs> bro. Uh, yeah, man. I'm 31 now. How old are you? 32? Thir 33, bro. 33. See, we up there, bro. We up there. We up, up there. God damn, bro. Yeah, man. Look at this shit, bro. Look. Look at this. That's that wrinkles. <laughs> bro, I got the smile line. I'm saying, man, I... I uh. <laughs> Man, I need the beauty filter on this. Can we? Let me let me see what we got. Can you smooth this out, Instagram? You can't smooth that shit out, bro. You can't. I need to smooth this out, man. I'm gonna start wearing sunglasses in the day, you know, like at nighttime too. Just yo, bro, it's all good, man. With age comes experience, you know what I'm saying? So it's all good. It's all good. No, man, I feel like uh, I don't know how you feel about this, but I like getting older. <laughs> There's a lot less stress. There's different types of stress, you know. It's yeah. like, um, you know, the things we used to worry about as far as fit, like uh, where we fit in in this world and and uh, the the need to prove ourselves is kind of yeah. Yep. You know, I, I can live a real simple life and I'll be all right. Yo, big facts on that, bro. Big big facts. Um, yeah. I, I want to ask you. I'm like, do you remember uh, a Tutter? Uh, I seen his 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 video online one time, and his name he goes by the name of Wizard. Wizard is you mean he's like a big dude? No, not a big dude. Like he's this like skinny dude. He's like bald. Oh shit! Yeah, skinny man. Dude and bald. I was gonna say. Because you talk to a lot of tutters, man. A guy named Wizard, bro. God. He's from Cali? I don't know where he's from, bro. I seen a clip of him online. Mm -hmm. I think it's still online, bro. It's it's on yo, bro. This is like this had to be like two thousand eight, but it was bro, 
one of the illest fucking clips, bro. Yo, yo, is that? Hold on, Icon knows what it is. Yo, Icon, do you know who who this who this wizard guy is, bro? bro. Yo, 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 this is about to end. I'm gonna start another one real quick, all right? Yo, Icon, log in. We gotta know who this wizard guy is. All right, yo, yeah. log in. Yo, yo.